Oh, whoa, you're so freaking cool. <laughs> Come on. When we think of migration events, we often imagine flocks of birds or maybe herds of large mammals. But actually, amphibians right here in the southeastern US also undergo mass migration events. Unfortunately for our salamander friends, because it's been such a dry year, these ephemeral wetlands have not yet filled up with water. And I think that since it's so dry, they're definitely going to be under logs. And so that's where we're gonna begin our search. Oh, <laughs> look at this little guy right here. All right, there is our first salamander of the day. You always wanna try and create a barrier between your skin and amphibian skin so you don't damage that really sensitive mucous membrane. Oh. Hey. <laughs> okay, now this little cutie is a red back salamander, and this is one of the most widespread salamander species in the United States. These are plethodontid or woodland salamanders, and one thing that's really cool about that group of salamanders is they're actually lungless. 100% of their respiration is actually cutaneous, which means they literally breathe through their skin. Now it's in the name, but the woodland salamanders as you probably expected, do live mostly in woodland or forested areas, and they're heavily reliant on at least partially closed canopy forest with plenty of leaf litter and also large diameter coarse woody debris they can take shelter under because pretty much everything wants to eat these tiny little salamanders. Research has also shown that redback salamanders represent a enormous amount of biomass in these forested systems because they're so energy efficient, almost all of the calories they consume are put directly into body mass, which means that if a higher level consumer were to eat this little redback salamander, it would be getting almost all of the energy that this salamander had in its body. Whereas small mammals, or let's say birds, a lot of the energy that they consume is just going into keeping them warm. So it's not consumable by higher level predators. So even though they are small and you might not see them unless you're really searching, these little woodland salamanders are still critically important to the overall ecosystem. So we'll get this adorable little salamander oh, back under its log and we'll keep searching for our target species. Right there, that little beautiful organism is probably the most perfect creature on planet Earth. Okay, maybe not the most perfect, but pretty darn close. That is the marbled salamander. Now, I love marbled salamanders because, for one thing, just look at this animal. It is chunky, it is adorable. Marbled salamanders are actually the state salamander of North Carolina, and they are ambistamids. And our ambistamid salamanders are a pretty big group of salamanders that primarily live underground. So for most of the year, marbled salamanders are not going to be visible. They're either going to be actually underground or under a log like the one that you saw we found this one under. And all of the ambistamid salamanders are interesting because they are actually a migratory amphibian. So what the adults will do is in the fall of the year, they'll migrate down from the uplands right beside the ephemeral wetlands and they'll deposit their eggs in moist soil beneath logs near where the wetland is. And as the cold season continues and that ephemeral wetland fills up with water, those eggs will eventually be covered by water and then hatch and develop as larval salamanders. While marbled salamanders are always a treat to see, they're actually not our target salamander on today's adventure. We are searching for a much rarer species of ambistomatid salamander. There's typically only one or two rainy nights in an entire year where adult tiger salamanders will emerge above the ground. So if we can't find a tiger salamander tonight, I might have to wait until next year to even have a chance at seeing one again. Thankfully, the rain hit and amphibians started moving by the thousands. What you're looking at right here is a fate that befalls many amphibians, which is roadkill mortality. And as you can see, cars and salamanders do not mix. So one really simple action that you can take to help conserve our native salamanders is by simply slowing down on roads that are near lowland areas or wetland areas, especially on rainy nights in the late winter or early spring here in the southeastern US. After helping a few other amphibians cross the road, we spotted something huge and slimy making its way towards the wetland. Wait, before we meet the tiger salamander, please boop that like button. It took me about 30 hours of filming and editing to create this video, but it only takes you one click to bring the joy of salamanders to people everywhere. 
And now back to the show. All right, take a look at this amazing amphibian right here. This is the Eastern Tiger Salamander, the largest terrestrial salamander in the state of North Carolina. Now, Eastern Tiger Salamanders get their common name primarily because you can see they have these yellowish vertical bars on their tail and on the ventral side of their body. And then these blotches or kind of spotting pattern that reminds me a lot of their close cousin, the spotted salamander. The adults like this one will spend most of their lives in the uplands and then migrate downhill to these ephemeral wetlands only during select breeding events. When the adults arrive at these ephemeral breeding pools, what they're gonna do, the males are gonna deposit a spermatophore pocket in the leaf litter, the females are gonna pick that up, and then those females are going to deposit an egg mass. Now, for the next two weeks or so, those eggs will sit in the water, they will incubate, and then the larvae will hatch and they'll actually be fully aquatic. So they'll have these external gills that make them look a whole lot like axolotls, which are a much more popular ambistimid salamander. And then about two to three months later, depending on the water temperature and how much food is available, those larval tiger salamanders will lose their gills, they'll crawl out of the water, and they'll head to the uplands to spend the rest of the year underground with the rest of the adults. Tiger salamanders are actually extremely capable predators, and they have a pretty diverse diet that is primarily composed of invertebrates, but large adults like this one could definitely prey on small vertebrates. And in fact, the largest tiger salamanders, those individuals that might reach lengths of over a foot, have been known to take prey as large as small snakes or even other tiger salamanders. Now, because these salamanders get so large and have such a diverse diet, they are extremely ecologically important to these ephemeral wetland systems. These ephemeral wetlands are critically important for the success of tiger salamander populations in the wild because they actually cannot breed successfully without them. The reason that these wetlands are so important is because they typically do not have fish, which means there are no predators for the eggs of our tiger salamanders. Unfortunately, these ephemeral wetlands are often the target of draining for development or they get filled in for agriculture since the soil in them is so rich. And so much of the habitat that used to be available to our tiger salamanders is gone now. And in fact, these are considered a state threatened species here in North Carolina. Just a few months ago, the federal government removed regulations protecting these isolated wetlands from development. A policy decision which could potentially have a devastating impact, not just on salamander populations, but also numerous other species of amphibians, reptiles, and invertebrates that rely on ephemeral wetlands for survival. Thankfully, it's easier than you might think to have a directly positive impact on amphibian conservation through actions like volunteering with a local land trust or conservation organization, or even just being respectful of sensitive habitats when you're out on an adventure. If we don't work to conserve these ephemeral wetlands and the upland habitats that adult tiger salamanders need to survive, we would be losing a true natural treasure of the state of North Carolina. And there, this adult goes towards that breeding pond, we'll let it go on its way. What an absolutely incredible amphibian encounter. Such a unique animal and such a great reminder of why it's important to conserve our wetlands. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out. <laughs>